Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Uh, I'm TJ from Archer Outdoors. Today, I'm in the middle of the Green Mountains in central Vermont at Campbell Sump State Park, and I'm going to be doing a review on the 2023 Toyota Tacoma uh, TRD Off-Road. Um, I've had this truck for about a month now. I uh, didn't want to do a review when I first got it because I haven't driven it. I can't really give any feedback um, in that sense, so I figured I'd wait a little bit. Um, I'm going to go through the whole vehicle, and I will be doing some projects in the future. I'll make a whole playlist on my channel, so make sure you like and subscribe. Um, so that you can see all the um, updates I do. I will take videos of each, adding a roof rack, um, cold air intake, all that kind of stuff. So, all right, let's begin. All right, so we're gonna start with a quick walk around of the entire vehicle. Um, vehicle is pretty short for a truck. As you can see, the cab is almost centered in the entire vehicle. Um, I did get the five foot bed on this model. The tires and uh, wheels are pretty sweet on it. They got the uh, black and chrome pattern to them. Just walking around the whole outside here. Get this cool little TRD 4x4 off-road sticker on the back. I did go ahead and get some uh, plate covers for the Tacoma symbol. These did not come standard, but they were about $15 on Amazon. They just stick right on. Super easy to use. Now, the TRD Off-Road does come with 16-inch wheels, which is pretty sweet, so you can get a little bit bigger tire on there. They're uh, 265 70R 16s. I know some of the other TRD models have the 17-inch uh, with a little smaller tires, which may not be as ideal for off-roading. You also get this cool grill for the TRD. I haven't quite looked into it uh, completely yet, but done a little bit of research. You can get these orange lights that go in the grill. Might be something I might look into in the future. The headlights on this are super bright at night. Um, standard headlights do have the line across the top so they don't go up. Uh, they are LED, um, but once the brights are on, it is a full beam and they are um, very helpful, really light up the road well. All right, so if you wanna look under the hood, all you gotta do is come in here. There's a little lever right under the dash. Pops the hood up. This truck does love to beep. And there's just a small lever on the inside here. Slide your hand in, push to the left, and you can lift up the hood. All right, now I am not necessarily a car guy, so I'm not going to pretend to know all the details of the engine and everything like that. Um, it does come standard with a V6 though. Um, the truck does seem a little sluggish uh, if you try to uh, stomp on it anywhere, but I haven't had any issues trying to go up any kind of terrain or anything like that. Um, here's the air, filters, air filter system. This will be one of the first things I replace. Uh, every vehicle I own, I end up going with the uh, K&N cold air intake. So um, make sure you subscribe, uh, like my page, and look for a video, video of that in the near future. All right, so getting into the back of the vehicle, the handle right here is pretty easy to use. Um, it does not lock automatically um, when you lock the car for the standard uh, TRD off-road um, you can get that feature added it's about five or six hundred dollars i believe uh, if you would like to lock it with the key though there's a key that comes with it where you can lock the handle there uh, it also comes standard with a backup camera that is built right next to the handle working our way down we have a plug-in for different styles of trailers if you want to haul any kind of trailer on the truck and it also comes standard with a hitch which is huge um, some vehicles don't come standard with them and it's typically like five or six hundred dollars to add that um, all right, so the tailgate is not um, fully assisted. It's pretty easy to bring up and down though. I haven't had any issues with that so far. All right, this truck comes standard with some lights in the bed too. These things are super bright. Uh, I love them. I've used them a lot so far at night. They light up the entire bed. We also have lights on the back of the cab right there that uh, shine down into the bed as well. We have a tie down spot on either side of the bed back here. I've used these quite a bit already. Um, and we also have some up toward the front of the bed, close to the cab on either side. As you can see, um, you know, you can easily fit a foot locker, a Yeti cooler, anything like that, and tie them right down. I drove up a pretty nasty uh, gravel road on the way up here, and I had no issues with anything sliding around. Now, if we want to store ratchet straps or bungee cords or anything like that, this truck comes with this cool little compartment right here. Personally, I just have this little bag where I store everything in there. It's pretty deep and this just locks back in. The bed of this also has a 120 volt outlet in the back. 
Going along the side, I did get a tonneau cover. It's a three-fold by Gita Motors. It's not a very expensive one, but it does the job perfectly. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm planning on doing with the whole exterior of the truck yet. Uh, I'm looking at getting a rack for the back, um, but I do want a tonneau cover still to have some dry storage. So if you have any ideas, uh, go ahead and comment those below. We have these adjustable tie down points as well. All you do for these is loosen these up and you can push in the side and slide them. There are spots where they lock in on either side. One of the coolest features I like about this truck is when the vehicle is locked and I have the key fob on me, all I have to do is touch the handle and it unlocks the truck for me. Super cool feature, you push that or you touch that and the lights flicker. Now, going to the inside of the vehicle. Go ahead and start it, it does come with a push start. All right, so the door does have uh, two cup holders. This truck has a ton of cup holders all throughout the whole thing. Um, the little cubby in the side of the door has some felt material on the bottom. Um, really not a huge fan of that. I'm gonna look for something I can stick over that. I think that that will definitely uh, become a problem in the near future uh, with cleaning that and getting dirt down in there. We have um, automatic window drop. So if I push this all the way down to where it clips, window goes all the way down and same thing for the passenger side. Definitely love that feature. The back windows do not do that. You have to hold the button down to go all the way down. All right, so starting from the left side of the dash and working over to the right, um, here's the switch I mentioned earlier uh, for the lights in the bed. Um, I am a pretty tall person, so I do bump this a lot with my knee, something to watch out for. We also have a um, button here to turn the traction control on and off. As you can see on the dashboard, get these uh, little lights that come on for that. And here we have a button for the 120 outlet in the bed. All right, pretty awesome features. All right, so to control um, the lights, just flip this forward. So we got, this is full beams. We got our fog lights on. Here's auto or off and push forward for brights. All right. Going on the right side of the steering column here, this is how you turn on the windshield wiper. It is raining a little bit, so first setting down, second setting, third setting, and that's all we got. All right, so the dashboard is pretty awesome. Uh, it's pretty simple, which I like. I don't like anything that's too detailed and uh, complex. We have RPMs on the left and our engine temperature. We have our little uh, screen in the center and our uh, speedometer on the right, which is in miles per hour and kilometers with the gas gauge at the bottom. Now we do have all these buttons all over the steering wheel. Um, we don't have any buttons on the rear side. The only thing we have on the bottom right here is the cruise control, which you push down to set. I'm not moving, so it's not going to work right now. And we also have vehicle radar. So I click this little button and you see on the screen radar ready. Now going through the screen, you just use this little toggle right here. So starting on the left side, we have our um, speed if we want it, distance to empty, average fuel economy. Uh, I had this idling the other night, so I don't typically get 14.2 miles per hour. I actually average right around 18 for the most part, driving around city. Uh, trip distance and time until rest. So if you drive too long, this will tell you to take a break. And nothing on the bottom. Now on the right, Here's the lane sensing, so if you push this little bu button at the bottom here, it will tell you if you're getting too close to a uh, line on the edge of the road. I don't ever use this feature, or we have vehicle sensing here in the front. All right, let me go ahead and turn that back off. Scrolling down through, we have tire pressure, roll pitch indicators. Love this feature, so it'll tell you um, if the truck is going to roll or if it's uh, pitching a lot forward or back. Uh, as you can see, I'm at a little bit of an angle right now, so it's telling me I'm about five degrees uh, side to side. And here's the back of the top of the menu. As we go over, no messages, and we can adjust our settings through this menu. Going back down here, so we have our volume control in the front right here for the radio. If you like to skip a track or go backwards, we have our voice control settings right here and phone call settings. I use this all the time, it's pretty sweet. You're driving down the road, all you gotta do is just hit and call. Super great feature. All right, going across the rest of the dashboard here. So this dial right here is how uh, you change the vehicle into four wheel drive. Um, 
not a huge fan of this, honestly, because it is the same basic circular pattern as the push to start. So when I first got this vehicle, I find myself coming in here and pushing this a lot. Um, I got used to it. It's not that hard to um, get over it, but all you do is you turn the outside here to four high and then again for four low. All right. Um, here we have all of our temperature controls and our hazards. Hazards are pretty easy. Just push the button. Temperature controls. So this right here is the fan. So you just turn that left to right. All right, different modes. So you can see the screen changing right here. If it's out of these vents on top, feet, just feet, and defrost as well. All right, this little off switch. I have noticed with the off switch, if you turn it off, um, you still get a little bit of air coming out of here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, again, not that big of a deal. So we have AC, um, if you want to circulate the um, air through the vehicle, and defroster. Cool thing about this is once you turn this on, each side can have independent settings. So um, if somebody's riding with me and likes it a little warmer, I like it a little cooler, you can change that. But if you click this dial sync, then they will both change to the same temperature, which will go off the driver's side. Going down here till the bottom, you have your ECT power. This will give you a little extra power if you push that in. Um, I've used that a few times. Right here we have the switch for the rear window control. So looking back toward the rear window, you can automatically slide that over. Love that feature. And all you do to do that is you push the bottom of it to open it and pull it back to close it. On the right side here we have a USB adapter. If you use this USB adapter, it will link to the screen, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's got this little cover to close it. This button right here controls the wireless charging. So I use this as a spot to keep my sunglasses, but if you click this on, you see the little light and all you gotta do is set your phone on there and you can charge your phone that way. All the way here to the right, we have the classic car charger. All right, so going up to the screen. Now, the screen is pretty cool. You got your home button here. You can customize the screen any way you want. I believe standard was blue. I changed it to red. I like the red, red accents in the vehicle. Um, so we have clock, I did audio, um, range and miles per gallon. We got our uh, clock up here at the top as well. And it, you can add four um, preset contacts here on the screen. So all you gotta do is just click the screen and call a contact. Up here on the left, so we got home. We'll return you back to the screen. We have menu, so we got audio, phone, apps, projection, info, and setup. Going down, we have audio, so we got Bluetooth, USB, Sirius XM, FM, AM. You can reorder these any way you want. And maps. So the bad thing about the TRD off-road is this does not come standard with apps. I tried to go through and add the um, map app to the truck, and I was unable to do so. I called the dealership and asked about that and they said it only comes standard in the TRD Pro. Um, if anybody knows a way to add them to the TRD off-road, let me know, that would be much appreciated. Um, if you plug your phone in though, through this USB I mentioned a minute ago, it will um, use maps through CarPlay, so you are able to get GPS maps on the screen. All right, then we have the standard Seek, Track, uh, Phone, and apps over here. We've got power, uh, volume, and tune or scroll. All right, so getting into the center column now. So we have uh, two more cup holders in the front of the center column. As I mentioned, this truck has a ton of cup holders in it. So we have two in the driver's side door, two in the passenger side door, two in the front of the center column, one in the center of the center column, and two more in the back of the center column as well. Now these cup holders right here can fit a uh, variety of different sizes of water bottles, cans, anything like that. So here we got a uh, standard seltzer and got a little bit of extra room in there. And then on the right, we have a small Yeti. So pull both of those out. As you can see, you got these little tabs here that will adjust to the different size of drinking apparatus you have. And if you have something with a handle, you can just reach down, grab this whole tab in the middle and pull that right out so it's completely open. Really love that feature. Honestly, I haven't used it yet, but I think it's a really cool idea. All right, so going back from there. So we have the shifter, we got park, reverse, New, um, neutral, drive, 
and the shifter if you want to um, shift your gears while you drive. Seems like a pretty cool feature if you're off-roading or anything like that. We have our um, emergency brake right here. Right in front of this single cup holder, we have a little um, like change area or something like that. I've been using it for change. You really could use it for anything you want. Now, opening up the center col uh, column here, we have a little pen holder. Um, this thing is pretty spacious. As you can see, I keep some stuff in here. So I have my handgun keep in here. I have a um, extra anchor battery pack, a couple loose bills. Um, couple magazines, some random wires, so we got a charger, some phone chargers, got a lighter, um, another USB charger if I need it. And the other cool thing with this is we have uh, a USB-C in there as well, um, two more USB slots. So definitely love that. As I mentioned earlier, if you use these USBs, uh, it will not connect with the dash, but if you use the USB right here, your phone will play through CarPlay. Um, pretty cool though, so you could have multiple people charging phones and it will not affect the entertainment system. All right, so moving into the glove box, uh, you are able to lock the glove box. Uh, you, the truck does come with a key to be able to do that. Pretty spacious lock box. Uh, me personally, I use these two pouches in here. Uh, they're pretty cheap Amazon pouches. I think they're like $15 a piece, but I can keep some pretty uh, useful things in here. So on the outside, I have a seatbelt cutter if I ever get in a bad spot. Um, I have a couple chem lights, battery powered chem light, tourniquet, uh, little Sawyer uh, water filter. I have a flashlight in this pouch and then a uh, multi-tool in that pouch. And getting into the other one, this is kind of my navigation pouch. So I open this one up. I have some map pens, a compass, um, some alcohol wipes, uh, protractor, probably don't need the protractor, just threw it in there. Uh, the map pens are awesome. Um, if you're traveling and you need to take some quick notes, you can write right up on your windshield and then use some alcohol wipes to wipe it off later. And I also keep my easy pass and registration in here. Again, each of these pouches were like $15, so 30 bucks. Got some pretty cool storage in the glove box. They both fit in there great and everything's neat and organized. I don't have things flopping around, especially while I'm driving down a rough road. All right, so last thing we're gonna cover from the driver's seat here, we have the rear view mirror. It does tell you your direction up in the top right hand corner. So right now I'm facing north. Um, you can set it to auto dim or you can leave it um, standard if you'd like. I always leave that on. Now, we got the visors up here. They do come with uh, lights. So when you pop this open, you got some lights if you need to see. At the top up here, we have the uh, light adjustment for the lights inside the cab see right there and right there. Now if the vehicle is not running and you have it in the center mode, you go back here and flip it on or back off, turn them all on all the time or flip them off. Now if they're off, when you open up the doors and it's dark outside, they will not come on. We also have a SOS button and then this whole system right here is exactly why you get the TRD off-road. All right, so this right here is your button to lock in the rear differential. You just push that. Now to use any of these features, you do have to have the vehicle in four low. So I would turn this all the way to the right or clockwise, put it in four low. Um, and then we have some different settings on here. Basically each turn you do uh, does a different amount of terrain, anywhere from some mud or sand all the way into um, big rocky uh, talus or anything like that. All right. Passenger side also has the mirror and lights as well. All right, getting into the passenger side, we have the same thing right here. I can touch the door handle, it will unlock the vehicle. So open this up. Cup holders, as I mentioned, you can also lock or unlock the vehicle from the passenger side. You can push this in automatically if you'd like to. And we have our window adjustments. Passenger side also has that felt at the bottom as I was talking about earlier. The um, TRD off-road also has this little protector right here so you're not going to scuff up your paint. I do love that feature a lot. Um, this also came standard with rubber floor mats. They're super easy to clean. I cleaned them yesterday. All you got to do is pop these little tabs over and this floor mat comes right out and you just have carpet underneath. Pop those back in. Now, I grabbed some uh, Smitty built um, seat covers these actually were out of my jeep so you can see they're a little rough still um, they were pretty expensive i actually like them a lot so i didn't take them back out um, 
The standard seats are super comfortable. Just wanted to protect them it being a new vehicle. The seat covers are pretty sweet. I could unzip this here. I got some storage right there, a couple things. Zipper in the front. All right, so getting into the passenger side rear door, open this up. Again, two cup holders. We also have this little tray right here if we wanna keep something else. Felt at the bottom. We have window adjustments or you can manually unlock or lock the doors right there. Now, I love the storage area back here. So if you lift the back of the seat um, down or fold it down, um, we do have this compartment back here. Uh, I keep a tarp and a woobie in here in case I get uh, stranded somewhere. I can keep warm, keep some wipes for the inside of the vehicle and a medical bag. Um, the seat folds up, hides all that stuff perfectly. Now, when the seat is down, we do have this hard plastic cover right here, which is pretty awesome. So as you can see, I have my fishing gear, some camera stuff, a cutting board. Um, planning going fishing today so I have this nice little platform I can keep all this stuff out here now if I move this stuff out of the way here so we get this good platform all I got to do is pull down here and lift the seat back up it is a little tight all right now as you can see the headrests fit into the seat the bottom part of the seat, which is pretty awesome. All right, so if you don't want these things flopping around, they just have these little holes, they fit right down inside of there. Great way to store them out of the way, and then you just pop them back in. There's a little tab on both sides right here to push them back in the vehicle. Definitely love this feature. All right, now, Underneath the seat, we do have the storage compartment right here. So you just turn this, unlocks it, and opens up. This is where I keep all my tools. So I have the uh, tire kit that came with the vehicle. I have a mag light, some duct tape, uh, snow brush, hiking poles, um, some flares, and jumper cables. Now, I do have a car seat that stays in this vehicle all the time. And one thing I was worried about is uh, losing the storage space on that side. But the cool thing about this is this pass goes all the way through, so I can still store stuff in there and I can just reach under, grab it, pull that back down, lock it, and the seat comes back down. Now, one thing with this vehicle is the buckles for the seat belts in the back. Um, they do tend to fall down in here, so Toyota, uh, thinking ahead, made these little pockets right here for the buckles. So you could just stick all three buckles right in those pockets. You can flip the seat back down and you can just reach in and pull it out of the little pocket right there. So you can buckle up. Absolutely love that feature. All right, going in the backpack here, use these two cup holders as I talked about earlier. There is a vent under the driver's side and passenger side seats, um, which will blow hot air back in the back. Um, these are the seat covers I was talking about. Uh, they do have molly, I'm not gonna put any pouches on them. I don't think that's necessary. Um, but they are cool for storing some stuff. Like I keep some extra pens in the side right there. And this zipper pouch, I keep my manual, little uh, Gold Zero solar panel. So when I'm out on my adventures, if I need to charge my phone or anything like that, I do have that option. And I still have the pass-through right here. Now, this is where I keep my Atlas and uh, fishing and hunting regulation books, anything like that. Uh, super easy to get in and out of. Um, they're out of the way and kind of protect them. So I'm not gonna mess up the pages or anything. And lastly, we have the driver's side um, rear area. So same thing as the passenger side rear seat. We cup holders, little area to store things if we need to. Um, felt at the bottom, window adjustments, and lock. Now, as you can see, I have a kiddo at home. Um, so I do keep a car seat in here all the time. The car seat clipped in very easily. Uh, it took me about five minutes to put this whole thing in. Um, one thing with the Tacoma, again, I'm a big person, I'm six foot one, so when the uh, whole car seat is in the vehicle, I can't put the uh, driver's side seat back all the way, it does hit the car seat. Um, if that's something you're worried about, maybe look at a Tundra or something like that. Um, but for me, I'm six one, I'm about 200 pounds, and I make it work, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. All right, so getting into the gas cap here, so all you gotta do is open this up, there's no button or release on the inside of the vehicle or anything like that. Just turn the cap, comes off really easily. I have seen online they make uh, little storage things that go in this area right here to store the cap uh, while you're filling up fuel. You don't need that because honestly, just clips right in there and holds the cap just fine. Take it back out, put it in, and turn it. 
and you'll hear one click and it's tight. Pretty easy. All right, so going under the vehicle to the spare tire. The spare tire is right in the back, back here. Um, very easy to get to. There's just a little release in there. You pull the tire down right off the back side. Um, this does come with the upgraded suspension system as well. I've had this on a couple really, really rough roads, um, pretty fast actually, and I've had zero issues with the suspension. I haven't even felt it bottom out yet. Um, definitely give the suspension of this vehicle a 10 out of 10.